bad lookout. Reneus and Scarloe were talking quietly to Caldy next morning when Duncan stormed up, followed by Sir Handel. Hello, chuckled Reneus. Here we go. I nearly came off, fumed Duncan. Those coaches pushed me. Mr. Percival says they didn't. He said I kept a bad lookout. We've no money to mend you, he said. And if it happens again, I'll leave you at the back of the shed. Why does he always pick on me? It's not fair. Scarloe said nothing. He just winked at Reneus like this. As you were saying, Coldy, remarked Reneus, you had two coaches on your trial trip. Do you ever take more? No. Our line is so steep that we're only allowed one. We each have our own. Mine's called Catherine. I know her well. That's most important. Why? asked Sir Handel. They're only coaches. Ours, said Coldy, are something more. You pull your coaches and you can see ahead. We push ours up so we can't see. They watch the line for us. The guard watches too, of course, but Catherine's so clever that I know at once if anything is wrong. That must take a load off your mind, said Scarlowe. Caldy smiled, but not off my buffers. Climbing's hard work and needs... A lot of steam. My fireman and I have a tiring time. Coming down, he went on, it's different. Catherine and I just roll. We need no steam for that, Sir Handel sighed enviously. I should like that, he said. With your automatic brakes, it sounds like a rest cure. That, replied Culdy, was just the mistake poor Godred made. Who, asked the little engines, is Godred? Godred was our number one, and named after a king, Culdy replied. Perhaps that went to his smoke box and made him conceited. He'd never keep a good lookout. He'd roll down the line looking anywhere but at the track. You'll have an accident, I told him. Puh, he said. I've got automatic brakes, haven't I? And driver's got his air brake. What more do you want? More sense from you, I said. No engine can stop at once if he isn't ready to obey his driver's controls. The first thing a young engine learns, agreed Scarlowe. Godred never learnt sense. His driver and fireman and the manager all spoke to him. They even took him to pieces to see if anything was wrong. But still he went on in that same old way. One day, I was going up, and waited at a station for Godred, coming down to pass me. As I waited, so it happened. One moment he was on the track, the next his driver and fireman jumped clear as he rolled over. No one was hurt, his coach stayed on the rails, and the guard braked her to a stop. They brought Godred home next day. We've no money to mend you, said our manager, so you'll go to the back of the shed. As time went on, poor Godred got smaller and smaller till nothing was left. What? What happened? asked Duncan anxiously. It's not nice to talk about, said Coldy. But what happened? Why isn't it nice? Our drivers used Godred's parts to mend us, answered Coldy mournfully. Sir Handel and Duncan were unusually silent long after Duncan had gone home. Neither Scarloe nor Reneus ever mentioned that Caldy had made the story up.